All righty then. Welcome, welcome to a new episode of the Happy Productive Podcast. I just know y'all are going to love my guest today because I love her so much and I get to work with her. So welcome to the show, Miss Yuri Chu Su. Thank you so much, Jennifer. I'm delighted to be here. I am delighted to be here as well because we are going to dive into a topic today that is so important for businesses, business owners, but though it's one of those things that I think has a fairly high cringe factor <laughs> that people are just like, ah, I don't want to talk about that, but it is something that will absolutely just like set you free in your business. And that is going to be process, 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 process. So Yuri, take a moment though, and just like share everybody, share with everybody a little bit of your story and like how you came to be here and let's, and then we're going to dive into more process stuff. Yeah. So well, thank you for welcoming me into the Happy Productive Podcast. My name is Yuri and I'm an online business manager, so an OBM, but I specialize in processes and systems and optimizing that. And how I came to be uh, this person or this version of myself is that I have a corporate background. I used to be a CPA, a chartered professional accountant, and I audited firms and companies and I was an auditor. So what an auditor is, is somebody who looks at the numbers, who looks at the processes and continuously uh, gives recommendations on how to improve them. And even though I did not like accounting and the number side of it all, I always had this mindset of how can I make this better? Whether it was how we documented things, how we, how we tested things, how can I make the spreadsheet more usable? And at that time, I didn't know that I was gaining all these skills, to be honest. And then when I jumped into the entrepreneurial side of uh, the business world, I quickly learned that a lot of people don't think in this way. So that's something that I have really um, helped my clients to do and helping them find a way to work more efficiently. I love that so much. And you and I have known each other for quite a few years now. And it was so interesting because the way we found each other, I remember, I think I was advertising for a position and you had applied to it. And I remember looking at your resume and I was like, man, she has got some mad financial skills and I really wanted to talk to you. And then when we talked, you're like, yeah, I don't want to do any of that financial stuff. <laughs> exactly. Left that behind. <laughs> yeah. You left it behind, which takes so much courage. And then you started your own business, which I think is so, so cool, of course. And just talk to us a little bit, because I know there's people here who are listening about that journey. And so, I mean, what was that like for you to like leave a comfortable corporate job and then just like leave it all behind and start your own business? Yeah, it was not easy. I will say it was comfortable in the sense that I got a paycheck every two weeks. I had benefits. I had a, a company and a company behind me, I guess, but I wasn't happy. I, it was not aligned with my soul whatsoever. I was very miserable. I knew I didn't want to be there. So I took the gutsy move of quitting without having anything lined up. I knew I wanted to give myself that time off and travel. I'm a big traveler and see the world and explore myself and, and see what came from that. But I didn't. Many people leave these companies and have a job lined up and they don't give themselves any time to reflect any time to be curious. I was lucky enough that I could do that, but it also coincided with the pandemic. And that really forced me into figuring things out of what I can do, how I can make money, support myself virtually. Because I couldn't leave, literally. I was, I, we met, I remember very vividly, July of 2020, 2020? July of 2020. Mm. Is that what I think it was? It was yeah, it was 2020. Yeah, it was July 2020. It was just after like the those really harsh months of the initial phase of the pandemic. And I knew that VAs were a thing, virtual assistants were a thing. And I applied, I saw your ad and I'll shout out this website, www.hiremymom, because that's mm -hmm. where I, I found you <laughs> and you found me and I'm not a mother. So anybody who's out there who wants a virtual job, this is a great place to go. And there's updates, uh, new postings every single day. And I saw your uh, posting and I applied and I 
here we are. <laughs> yeah. Hire my mom is like one of my secret weapons. Like I go oh. there all the time and we've gotten so many amazing people from our team from hire my mom. You don't have to be a mom, but it is for virtual workers. And I think because it's such a smaller site, it just doesn't get like the the mass crazy volumes and some of the others. And so it really, really works. So big shout out to our friends, um, Leslie at Hire My Mom. <laughs> you guys yes. are doing a great job. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. And so, and so Yuri, let's talk a little bit about process because I know for so many people, when we think about process, it's like, uh, it sort of like scrambles our brains just a little bit. However, I have seen in my own business, like if you want to tame the chaos, the way to do that is through process. Now, I've noticed that as we've grown, when we're like in a growth phase, it's very hard to kind of process things because you're sort of figuring it out, like to document all of that. You're just sort of figuring it all out. But once you got it figured out, really process is how you free yourself. It's how you train your people. It's how you can guarantee, you know, a quality product over and over and over again. And I, and I do think it is how you can step away from your business with confidence, knowing that things can run. So I'd love for you to just like speak like, okay, so first of all, to the person who's like, they know they need to work on their process, but they're like putting it off. Like, what would you have to say to that person? First, have a lot of compassion with yourself because it's not easy. Some people yeah. are very creative and visionaries and they don't think in this more structured, practical way. Yeah. So that would be the first thing. But I would say to as much as possible, look at it as if you're a bird, a bird's eye view of the whole thing, right? There's a lot of moving pieces, but what ties together? What can you make? What can you automate? What can you connect together? What are you doing repetitively that takes a lot of your time and a lot of energy that can be simplified? What can you centralize? Asking yourself these questions could really help you come up with a process that's already being done. You just have not put the energy or effort to kind of really yeah, document it or even have eyes on that. And a lot of the times having an outside person step in and give you that perspective or that audit, as we say, you know, is so helpful because once you're in the business and you're doing it day to day, you don't see all these things. You don't see that those five extra minutes that you're spending on something that you've already done so many times and repetitively. So having an outside perspective can be so valuable in this place. Yeah, I agree. And you said something so important about like, if you, if you don't have a, a brain for process, nothing wrong with that, but like, you can always bring that person in. You can always hire that person. You can contract with that person who does think in that way. You'll still need to be involved in the overall, like how you want it to work. But after that, somebody with a process brain, like they're going to get so excited about like getting in there and documenting it and automating it and making all the sheets and just all the stuff, right? Because it's just like so much fun when you do have that process brain. Yeah. And I can attest to that. I have that process brain. You've seen it in action many times Yeah, where you're like, Yuri, I want this done, get it done. And I'm like, all right, let's map it out. Let's do all the little yeah. details. Yeah. The details of it. And a lot of people don't like that and that's okay. But there are people like me who just live for that. Like, I Absolutely. love the processes, the small details, like breaking something big and complex and simplifying it and optimizing it. That's what I really yeah. focus on. Yeah. And you helped us with one of our clients who was tracking a lot of their data in a Google sheet and you were able to go in there and create like some automated formulas that would do some calculations, use some color coding. Cause as this client was really struggling to like manage all this data, um, you went in there and you're just like, let me, you know, use color to just like notify things. So guys, like if you're trying to track something like um, a client where they're at in a process or if they've fallen off the process and you can just the simple act of turning a field red or green can just visually make things so much easier to manage, but not everybody knows how to get in there and like write formulas and, and format spreadsheets and things like that. But talk to that a little bit, like how much did that help the client like the work that you did on that sheet to make it more user-friendly and kind of like dummy proof. I'm not being judgmental, but just kind of like dummy proof the sheet and really make it a more usable tool in their business. Yes. So Google Sheets, it's an extremely powerful tool, one that I am absolutely in love with. 
And I have to give credit to my old corporate job because we use that for everything. So that's where I learned a lot of what I know now, but I've seen just the in, like indefinite power it has. And yes, with this client, you know, it was a lot of manual tracking. And because there weren't any formulas or this dummy proof system, it was very easily, you can have errors. You can have something that's not updated correctly. So having the right formulas, color coding it, it just makes it foolproof. And it really does help the client achieve what they want in a much faster way. It's actually fun to use a, a sheet that is customized to what your business needs. I think that is something that people don't quite understand that it's possible, that a simple spreadsheet can be completely customized to what you are desiring and it can really uplevel your operations. Yeah. And even just adding like a formula that says, all right, based on the client's start date and based on, you know, the, the date that they should be in the next stage of the program, if so many days have passed, you know, make the field turn red. So that way the team gets, you know, some kind of like visual notification. It's just like little things like that. I think just go so far to just make our lives so much easier when we're trying to keep track of so many different little details and moving parts. Yeah. And I think one aspect of a business that gets overlooked is the follow-ups is the mm -hmm. clients that you're not keeping your eye on is those who have said they're interested, but they haven't quite paid or maybe they're late in paying and you just don't have that process tightened up that you're losing business. You're wasting time and it's just not efficient. So mm -hmm. a sheet can do a lot for you there. Yeah, absolutely. I love when we tie our sheets into like our Asana tasks. And so using Asana, which is a project management tool, if you haven't heard about it, we really love it. Um, but in Asana, what we can do is, so we have an Asana task, so we don't forget something, but then we link the Google sheet to it. And that it's a little thing, but that's been a game changer. Like your meeting agendas, right? You have a meeting and you're tracking data in a Google sheet. And then you sit down in the meeting and you're like, where did that sheet go? And nobody can ever find it. But when you have your agenda in an Asana task with the sheet linked to it, it takes no time at all. And you can just stay so much more organized and be so much more productive with just simple things like that. Yes. And the key word there is linking. Mm. I link everything to everything so in my world everything is linked so it, it makes it so much quicker i don't have to look for things anytime i need something it's already there and what really set off my obsession with spreadsheets is the ability to link a sheet to each other so mm. i can create almost like a database and i call them huddle boards personally i have a huddle board where it updates based on another sheet Mm -hmm. So that really unlocked a lot for me. And that's how we created things like the KPI tracker, that mm -hmm. things can be linked together. And that was something that was massive. We were using yeah. a, a system before called another, uh, another system that was quite expensive and it was quite complicated, but for our clients, now we have a Google Sheet KPI tracker that is, has proven to be quite useful. It really has. It's so funny because we went through several uh, softwares that do KPI dashboards and they would have some features, but not enough features, or they were full of bugs or they were very, very expensive. And so we did, we just kind of went back to a good old Google sheet and <laughs> linking that stuff in there. And it gave us our metrics. It gives us our, our data our and charts, honestly, our charts. charts. I think it's more accurate, honestly, and I think it takes a lot less time and it's essentially free because it's all built in there and it's something we include for all of our coaching clients. So it's just like, hey, you need a, a KPI tracker, which you do. And if you're a, uh, one of our coaching clients, it's like, hey, guys, <laughs> we got to track all this data. Um, but yeah, the Google Sheets honestly have worked the best. I think we created them and then we went away from them and then we came back to them because yeah. everything else we tried and you guys don't reach out to me and try to sell me KPI software because I'm done with that. I went down the road. I'm not going back down the road. I'm keeping the Google Sheets. They work great. They're simple. They're old school, but they work. Um, but it's amazing to me how just that basic functionality, like there, there wasn't a better solution out there that we could find. Yeah, I agree. 
uh, one of our coaches, Kate, comments on how much she loves those sheets because she uses them for her own business as well. Yeah. So I'm just yeah. so happy that something as simple as a sheet can have such a great impact and almost pay dividends because yeah. it also it's a mindset and how you feel energetically about using a system. The system mm -hmm. can be in place, the process can be there, but if you just hate using it, you're not going to use it. If you hate the Asana, if you just have so much resistance, you're not going to update it and you're not going to use it. So it's going to be a way. So you have to feel like it's easy to use. Yeah, you might not love it. Okay, let's not get that far. But at least it's something that you can easily do without feeling so much resistance to it. Yeah. And, and if you do feel the resistance, I know sometimes I've been resistant to like learn something new, which is, I mean, I had two software companies, so I love software and I love technology, but as I'm getting older, Yuri, I'm just like, <laughs> fudge, I don't want to learn something new. It's just like, why do they keep changing it? I remember when I was 20 and I used to just be like, these old people, what's wrong with them? Like, you know, they would come out with windows and then the new windows. And I was just like in there keeping up and I criticize the old people because they're always so resistant to change. And now I am one of them because I'm just like, why can't they just keep windows the same? <laughs> why do they have to keep putting new stuff in there? Um, so it's so funny. So like, if you do get resistant, one of the ways that helped me to move past it was to, to focus on the outcome. Because the outcome is I love being organized. I love mm. having fe that feeling of like, I've got my hands around everything. And so by learning the new software, by using a tool, like that really helped me to kind of break down that resistance because really, what am I being resistant to? My own growth, my own success, mm. just because of a learning curve. So that was one thing that really helped me of just like, wait a second, when this is done, look how much more efficient, more organized I'm going to be. And that motivated me to kind of like get over that learning curve. I love that you said that. Yeah. I love that you said that. And so many of us feel that resistance with so many things, but as you said, yeah. on the other side of that is the next level. It's the next revenue stream is the next client. It's the next version of yourself. So if right. you just push through that, through it in however you can, there's so much that are available for you. Pain equals growth. The bigger the pain, the more the growth. <laughs> yes. It's almost like that discomfort, it's highlighting where you should lean in. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's so true. That's exactly where you need to lean in because that's where the growth opportunity is. I mean, I it's not that I don't love a good comfort zone, but you're mm. not going to grow. You're not going to go anywhere. Just staying in that comfort zone. Yeah. I love that we're talking about this because I'm actually going through that right now. Today, I'm starting this intensive personal development course uh, in this weekend, and it's all in Spanish. And oh. that is, for me, a huge discomfort. <laughs> Something like that in English is like, easy it's like a piece of cake but I've never used my Spanish brain in that way and yeah. after this call I'm actually heading there so I'm <gasps> feeling all kinds of emotions and nerves in a good way and when um, a new friend of mine invited me to this the first thing I said was my body feels resistance to this because it's all in Spanish and I'm nervous about that and that's why yeah. I think I should do it <laughs> that's what yeah I said Oh, I love that. That is why you should do it. I didn't even know that you spoke Spanish. So I'm already learning things about you right now. <laughs> yeah. So I was born in Peru. So that's my first language, but I left when I was nine. So my Spanish mm. just kind of stopped developing after that. A lot of vocabulary yeah. I don't quite have in Spanish, especially like spiritual or consciousness or, you know, development or business lingo. I don't quite have that. I can understand it. It's just my brain doesn't quite operate that way yet. So I'm, I'm pushing yeah. myself. <laughs> I love that you're pushing yourself. That's so great. Okay. You want me to teach you one of my favorite techniques of like getting through pain or fear or anxiety or any of okay. those? Okay. Let's okay. Do All right. This is very serious, you guys. You really have to pay attention to this. Okay. So the first thing that you do is you think of like your favorite accent. If you, mine is a Southern bell. I like to grab a Southern bell. It's an easy one to do. Okay. So you, you figure out whatever your favorite accent is, and then you take your hand and you've got to put a hand on your forehead. Okay. Cause we have to make a really big deal out of this. It's like, Oh, Oh, Yuri. 
<laughs> Yuri, Yuri, darling, you're feeling, you're feeling so much fear and anxiety. Oh, this is so overwhelming. How are we ever going to survive? Okay. <laughs> and you just take that fear in your best accent. That's and hilarious. you just like blow it up and you make it yeah. funny oh. and you see how you're laughing and it's just like, takes the what am I really, off. it takes the pressure off. Mm. It's like, oh, this is so terrible. Oh, I'm feeling some fear. There I you go. I love that. Okay. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to go today. I'm going to go today. <laughs> it just, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> Yes, you just got to have the hand, like Scarlett O'Hara, you got to have the hand on the forehead. This is just the end of the world, y'all. This is the, the most oh, that's horrible so thing that's ever happened to me, ever. Oh, I and love And then that. as you start, right, you just laugh it off and break it up. And then it's like, what am I doing? Like, this is not that big of a deal. I can handle this. I love this. And, and you, if we take that back, it's like a spreadsheet. You're like, oh, look at these numbers. Like, you know, oh. just like, oh, there they are, <laughs> all these numbers. And, you know, just making something lighter out of a situation that initially might not be like that. So I love this. <laughs> exactly. I know it's silly, but it's so powerful to just laugh it off, make it this huge thing. Like, <gasps> Oh, spreadsheet. What, what do people, spreadsheets are going to be the death of me. Oh, this is the worst thing that's ever happened. Like really? Okay. And just, just be crazy with it. You could do this. You guys who are listening, you can do it all by yourself. You don't have to do it in front of other people. Like we are, we're playing with it, but do it in your car, do it, you know, in the bathroom, do it wherever to just like blow it up and make it silly. And when you start oh. laughing, it just sort of breaks the whole thing up. I love that. I'm doing my taxes and I have such resistance. So I'm going to do that with my taxes. <laughs> I love it. You said with your taxes, that's perfect. Oh, I love it. All right, my dear. So tell us, um, give me just like one or two of your just like top tips that you want to share with the audience as far as just process spreadsheets, anything that they can put into action right away other than our our, oh, our Southern Bells. Yeah. With the spreadsheet, I'll say start simple. Don't overcomplicate it. I always start with a blank spreadsheet, obviously, and just put headings. What are the things I want to track? And then you can get more creative with it, adding colors or drop downs and such. But initially, just start with the basics. What is the most important thing that you want to track? That would be my spreadsheet tip. In terms of processes, similar break it down, have like a brainstorming session. What are the things that are going on in your business that are important? And what are the things that you, what, are, what is the goal? And break that down as small as possible, but just brainstorm initially. And then you'll see almost like a pattern and that can start building on what are things that are linked together. So start simple, do not overcomplicate it. Mm, I love that so much. And I'm going to throw one more in there, which is whatever process is causing you the most emotional distress, start with that one first, right? Just mm. get that off your plate. Just create a process around it because that negative emotional distress in your business, is going to like really make you hate your business. And we don't want to see that happen. I love that. It's a great, great advice. Yeah. Awesome. Miss Yuri, can you tell everybody where they can find you? <laughs> can you please have few calls with that accent? I can. <laughs> okay. So, it's yes. so funny. I used to live in Florida and I had a Southern accent. And so if oh. I hang out with anybody who's from the South or from Texas, oh I, like it just starts coming out. I was like, okay, Jennifer, just slow your roll. Remember you're from Arizona. You don't have a, but I did. I lived there for so many years. I just picked up that Southern accent. So yes, I will. I will put your request in to do our team meetings in. A, I'm going to make everybody do a Southern yeah, accent on our team meetings. Me, yeah. <laughs> or the next retreat, we have like a meal that we're all just in. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> that would be amazing. Uh, yeah, so for me, you can find me on my website. That's www.mynameyuriachusu.com. So I'm an OBM, an online business manager for entrepreneurs who are looking to up-level their operations. And I'm also on LinkedIn and Instagram at Yuri Chisu. 
Nice. Yuri, thank you so much for being here with me today. Hopefully we've inspired some people to get their acts together when it comes to process and spreadsheets. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jennifer. I'm delighted to be here. Ah, you're very welcome. All right, guys, that's it. Get out there and have a happy, productive day, y'all.